This is going to be the entire lesson describing exponential functions. With this lesson, we're going to focus mostly on um, money. I like money, so we're going to focus on that a lot. There are some other applications for it as well, but I think the one that applies to everyone is, is always money. So we're going to cover the entire lesson. This will be a little bit more of a lengthy video, but it might help in case you missed the lesson during the day. All right, so today with this lesson, we're going to talk about the difference between a growth, exponential growth, and an exponential decay. Uh, we're going to learn the difference between uh, different compound interest formulas. And then we're going to hopefully start by the end understanding why it's important to um, set money aside and leave it there and not touch it and just let it grow. They call that the time value of money. It will be exponential growth that we'll talk about there. Suppose you invest $1,000 at age 16 at 11%. The interest is going to be compounded continuously. What is the amount in the account at the age of 65. And this is what, a lot of what we're going to talk about today. We'll give you the answer to this one a little bit later on in this video. But this is going to be a big key is taking this money, investing it, and just letting it sit there. What happens to that? What's the time value of money? What, uh, what happens to this money? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, should we let it sit there a little bit longer? Should we let it sit there a little bit shorter? We'll kind of get into that as we go throughout the video. We need to talk about the difference between an exponential growth and an exponential decay. So what I want you to do is I want you to type this one here into your calculator. So if you're using the TI-84, this is going to be a Y1, will be um, 5 to the X power. Uh, if you're using the TI-Inspire, this would be your F1 of X. And just plug that in and then just hit enter. Uh, that should give you a, a good feel for what this one's going to look like. As you plug that one in, it should look something like this. It's, it starts really close here to this x-axis and then starts growing. And it grows, and it starts growing rapidly. We call that, uh, others refer to it as growing exponentially. And it's an exponential growth here because of this, here's your exponent on here. Now we consider this one a growth because the base, and the base is this number here. If you think back to your exponents, we have a base and we have a power or an exponent. So the base, if the base is larger than one, this is a growth. So the 5 is clearly larger than 1, so it will be a growth. Okay, now let's look at um, this one here. And if you want to, you can pause the video and go ahead and graph that one on yours. If you don't want to, um, you can just kind of look here. This one's 1 third to the x. Now this one is not greater than 1. So what you'll notice here, if you plug this one into your calculator, is that it is going down. Instead of growing rapidly, it's, um, it's uh, getting smaller as we go throughout, okay? It's approaching this x-axis, just getting smaller every time we go through. And the rule on this one is if it's less than 1, this will be a decay model. In other words, it gets smaller. These are things that, um, like radioactive material, um, items in, uh, that are uh, degrading, biodegrading, uh, those are all decay models, okay? It was once larger, and then it gets smaller and smaller uh, as time goes on. So, uh, Growth is larger than 1, decay is smaller than 1. All right, now, moving on here, here's the first uh, interest formula that we want. The one that's in blue here, I would write that one down. I'd push pause right now, write that one down in your notes. Um, then come back and let's kind of discuss it. So push pause now. After you've written it down, come back and push play. Okay, and let's talk about each one of these components. Let's start with P. P is the amount of money that you're going to initially invest. So the one we were talking about before, we talked about $1,100 invested at 6% interest, uh, invest, excuse me, I think it was 11% interest rate. Uh, so the $1,100 would be the principal amount. This is the amount that you start with, okay? This is your P. Times, and this is 1 plus R. R is your rate, your rate of interest. Now the example problem had a rate of 11%. So we'd have to convert that to a decimal, and 11% as a decimal would be 0.11. N is the number of times this one compounds per year. If it, compound, if it compounds once per year, your N value would be 1. If it compounds uh, quarterly, we've well, got to think of how many quarters are in a year. There are four quarters in a year, so that would be 4. Your N value would be 4. If it's compounded monthly, well, let's see, there are 12 months in a year, so it would be compounded uh, monthly, which would be 12 times a year, so your n value would be 12. If it were daily, that would be 365 for your n value. It just kind of depends on how often that is compounded. And t is the time. Time is measured in years in this case. Okay, so if it were um, 40 years that you have an investment sitting there, your t value would be 40. You plug all this in, and it will give you a. a is the amount of money 
that you have after your investment has matured, after 40 years or after 20 years, however long you've had it in there. So most of the problems that I give you at this point would be, I'm going to give you all of this information here on the right-hand side, and we're going to find how much that money is going to be worth after so many years. We're going to, we're going to find out what A is. All right, so let's go through one. Let's look at this one. We have $1,000 invested at 6% for one year. Okay, the interest is compounded annually. That means once a year it's compounded, so your N value is going to be 1. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take this formula right here in blue, and I'm going to fill in all the parts that we know. The first one that I'd like to fill in is P, because it's our present value, how much money we are investing. And right here, it says 1000 So $1,000 is what we start with. So that's my first thing I'm going to plug in, is 1000 All right, now 1 stays the same always, plus R, my rate on this one. Let's see, rate is 6%. So rate is going to be 0 0.06. So I'm going to fill that in right here. I'm going to put in 0 0.06. Divided by N. N is the number of times it compounds in a year. This one is just one. Now notice here that N goes in two different locations here. So I'm going to fill in both. Both of those two changed, okay? It was N. Now they're both one because it compounds one time per year. Okay, then T is the time, the number of years that it's compounding. Well, in this case, it was very easy. It was only one. So I'm just going to plug in one for T. Had it been 10 years or something, I would plug in 10 right here. But that's not the case in this one. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to plug this one into the calculator just like you see it right here. Okay, there's not going to be any difference. Uh, just plug it in exactly like you see it here. Um, if you're using a TI-84, you'll need to make sure you put parentheses around these two as well. Okay? Uh, TI Inspire will look just like this. We want it to look exactly like this. If it doesn't look exactly like this, it will get you a wrong answer. So make sure that it does, okay? All right, now we look here. After we plug that in, we just hit Enter, and that will tell us what our A value is, and that's 1,060. So if we have $1,000, we let it sit there for a year in an investment that pays us 6%. At the end of one year, we have $1,060. So we will have made $60 on this investment after one year, and we didn't have to do anything except not touch that money. Okay, as long as we're willing to have some patience, We'll make some money on there. All right, now let's get let's get some some practice in here. But before we do that, let's see if I can pull in um, one of these here in case you struggled with typing this into your calculator. Let me pull in one of these here. Here we go. All right, so let's see if I can get here are the parameters. Uh, let's see, a thousand. Okay, so I'm just going to type this one in. One thousand times, and we can just use these, that's fine, 1 plus, now I've, I've got to have a fraction here. If we look here, I've got to have a fraction. This is rate divided by n. So, oops, let me bring this up here. So my fraction on this one, um, you can always go here. These are always your shortcuts. Uh, a fraction one is right here, too. Some of you have probably already identified that. So this one is going to be 0 0.06 divided by the number of times that it compounds, in this case, which is 1. I go on the outside of my parenthesis here. Here's my little uh, caret, if you want to call it that. That's fine. Um, and right here, I'm going to write 1 times 1. Then I just hit Enter, and it gives me my answer there. OK, so remember, it has to look exactly like this up here. Notice how my 1 plus, and then I've got this fraction here. If you're using the TI-84, let's bring that one in right here. Let's see if we can bring that over here. Uh, okay, so this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I go 1,000. I use a parenthesis. I go 1 plus. Now, unfortunately, on this one, it doesn't have a nice fraction sign, so we just have to use our parenthesis, which is just fine, 0 0.06 divided by, and our n value is 1. I close parenthesis. Now, on this one, you're going to have to have two parentheses. Okay, one that goes with this fraction here, the other one that goes with this 1 plus, okay, so make sure you have that. That will be a mistake, a common mistake that I see students make, only because it's how you're entering it in. Now, up here, we just write in 1 times 1. If you are using a TI-83, you need to make sure to have parentheses around these two here. Otherwise, it will give you an erroneous answer. So you hit enter, and it gives you 1,060. So make sure when you're typing these in that you've got them typed in correctly. And that's the focus of today's um, process that we're going to be doing, is really just plugging these things in. So as long as you can plug them in correctly, we'll be okay. All right, now let's go back over here. Now, so let's see, we just did this one. There we go. All right, now I want you to try these two. So go ahead and take out your calculator. I want you to try both of these two. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play.
Check your answers here. Okay, on these 4.5%, uh, hopefully you could identify that that was 0 0.045. Okay, some people like to type in 4.5 right here. That would be 450% will give you a huge answer. That's not the case in this one. So make sure when you're, when you're typing that one in, you're okay there. And you can just type these in just like this, 4 times 30 here or 4 times 10 up here, and it will work out just fine. As long as these are in the exponent, okay? Then we'll be okay. All right, now try these two. I'd like you to push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. Okay, so hopefully we're getting the... Um, the feel for it, the compounded monthly, that means it was 12. Your end value should have been 12. Both of these two were 12. Um, and uh, if you've missed that, see if you can go back in and figure out where you made your error and uh, fix it. Okay, uh, Leonard Euler came out with a, a new thing. I'm not going to go through a lot on his. I'm going to kind of speed through this. I'll go through it more so in class. Uh, he came out with a fantastic number. Uh, this guy was a genius in mathematics, uh, born in Switzerland. Uh, learned math from his father. He ended up having some illnesses, which made it very difficult for him. But uh, through the help of scribes, he still accomplished quite a bit. He came up with the number E. You see, if we compound it monthly, that's great. But if we compound it daily, that's even better. And if we compound it every minute, that's even better. And if we compound it every second, that's even better. And every millisecond. Well, you get to a certain point where it compounds continuously. Well, in order to do that, we've got to have a number that will represent that. And that's going to be the number E. And this kind of sounds a little bit weird because we're used to E as a letter in the alphabet, but it's actually a number as well. The number E is an irrational number. It's similar to pi. Uh, here is the number 2.71 on change. Okay. Uh, this is very good. We use it for a lot of real-life um, exponential functions. We're going to get into a lot of these later on in the chapter. Um, and it's, it's a growth, okay, because our base here, E is our base. Our base is larger than 1, so it's a growth factor. Okay, so this is the second formula that I'd like you to write down. Take a second, push pause now, write this down in your notes, and then come back and let's explain it. Okay, on this one, you notice it uses a lot of the same letters that we were using before. P is the amount, that's our principal amount, our primary investment, uh, how much we started with. Okay, that's the same. E is our number E, so we don't need to really do anything there. Our calculators will have a button labeled E, that will be fine for us. R is the rate and T is the time. So those two remain the same. So these should be fairly easy in comparison to what we were just doing. Um, so we're going to invest $1,000 at 6%. If it's compounded continuously, how much do we have? So let's we're going to plug this one in. Now, this one, uh, we're going to kind of speed a little bit. I'm not going to plug in each one of them here. But we know that P is 1,000. E is just the number E. R is the rate, which in this case is 0 0.06, times time, which is 1. We're just going to plug that one into our calculator. If we plug that one into our calculator, we notice that we have um, 1,061.84. Now, if I asked you, instead of um, compounding continuously, if I asked you if it compounded annually, we did this problem earlier, if it compounded annually, we end up with 1,060. So we do end up with two different ones here. Okay, in this case, the compounded continuously was a little bit larger. It was $1.84 larger than this one. Well, let's talk about how to find that E. So let's bring in our calculators again. Let me bring this one over. Okay, so we have this one here. I'm trying to get it where we can actually see it enough. Okay, a thousand. Uh, so this one we're going to go a thousand. We're just going to type it in just like we see it here. The E button is right here. If you notice on your TI Inspire, E is right here. So it's going to be a thousand E, and it automatically brings up our exponent, which makes it really nice for us. And then we're going to type in this um, point zero six. Okay. I'm going to go on the outside of the parenthesis and I'm going to go times 1. Or you can do times, you can use another parenthesis, it doesn't hurt us at all. And just hit enter. And here we go, $1,061.84. You notice that I rounded here just a little bit. Uh, typically with money we'll round to the nearest cent unless it asks you for something else. So anyway, the E button is found right here. Uh, it's an E raised to the X power. Now let's bring in our um, TI-84 here. Okay. On this one, we've got a similar process, 1,000. The E button on this one is found right above this LN. If you look for the LN button right above that, we have the E raised to the X power. So we have to hit our second button, second LN, which gives me E. And you notice on mine, it automatically comes up to a, um, an exponent spot here. If you have a T83, it will show a little caret right there, which is fine. Yeah, especially if you're using the T83, make sure you use some parentheses here. 0 0.06. 
and you can even go times one if you wanted to. That, that doesn't hurt us. And close it off. If you use those parentheses on a TI-83, you'll be fine there, as well as a TI-84 if you have a previous um, software version. But anyway, all of those get us the same answer. But on the TI-84, you got to hit second, and then this LN button here will get it to you. All right, let's go back here to where we were. Okay, uh, so we, we did that one. I'd like you to try these two. Okay, type these two into your calculator. Obtain your answer. Push pause on the video now, and then come back and push play whenever you get your answer. Check your answers here. 0.75, hopefully you could identify that's 0.075. Um, so you notice nine years here. After nine years, we have $15,000. 15, eight, 15,712. If we just let that money sit there, this is where the patience comes in. We can just let that money sit there for 40 years. We now have $160,000. I didn't add any more money to this. Okay, and this is a very, very conservative rate of 7.5. In the stock market and so forth, you usually are going to average anywhere from 10 to 11 percent. So it's going to be a lot higher return in the stock market, and that's where most people uh, keep their retirements. Um, but you'll notice here, after just waiting more years and just not touching that money, it just grows, and it grows exponentially. It grows very, very large, very, very quickly, as long as you just let it sit. Okay? So that's the key. If you can invest any sort of money right now and just let it sit for as long as you possibly can, you will earn the maximum amount possible. All right. Uh, so I want you to figure out which one is better. Can we compound it monthly or continuously? Which one is better? So I could work out both of these problems, and then after you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. You will notice on this one, uh, we do end up getting more money if it is compounded continuously rather than every month or every day or every second, continuously is the best route for us. And this is what makes it so nice of what Euler came out with. Uh, with this number E, it helps us to be able to compound it continuously. It's very nice. Okay, and this is one I'd like you to do. Now this one is, if you'll notice on this, this is a decay. So we start with 400,000 cans. Okay, and we're going to see the decay over time, which should be less than that. So the decay is two-thirds. Um, I'd like you to work out both of these two. You're going to use the same exact process. Um, use both of those two, plug them into your calculator. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play on the video. Check your answers here. Now you'll notice on this one, after five years, we went from um, 400,000 down to 52,000 cans. And then after nine years, it went down to 10,000 cans. And that is true. With recycling, we usually do lose a little bit. Uh, we don't get can, you know, if you recycle one can, it doesn't turn into a whole new can. It, it is some product in there that we actually come up, come away with less after we recycle it. But that's okay. Recycling still helps in that we can reuse that product. Now, going back to our original question here, if we were to invest $1,000 at age 16, 11% interest, and it's compounded continuously. Go ahead and work this one out on your calculator. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answer here. So you have, end up with $219,000. Um, it's a lot of money. And uh, it, uh, if you allow the money to grow over time, you will be far, by far and away ahead. Um, just let it sit there. I mean, this is a long time, given this is almost 50 years, 49 years here. You allow this money to sit there, but $1,000 over 49 years turns into $219,000 just because you let it sit there. These are how rich people become richer because they're a lot, they have disposable income. And this is how median income or um, normal people also become rich for the first time because they allow their money just to sit there and grow and grow and don't touch it. And just let it grow. Now on this one, this doesn't really apply to this lesson here. However, we're going to learn this more, so I'd like to at least have some exposure to you. We're going to rewrite this one in exponential form. In an exponential form, what we're basically going to do is we're going to convert it to a fractional exponent. This is equal to 6 to the 1 half power. And let's talk about where that comes from. The square root, if we remember right, the square root actually has a 2 right here. It's an invisible 2. Sometimes you do see it. Um, and sometimes it's just listed like this. It's just a square root. So this is a 2 right here. This is 6 to the first power. So whatever your exponent is right here, that goes on top of your fraction. And whatever the number is out here in your radical goes on bottom of the fraction. These two are equivalent. 
And let's look at this one, the square root of 8. Well, that's the same thing as 8 to the 1 half power. Those two are equivalent. Again, squared goes on the bottom, 8 to the first power, this 1 goes up top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now let's look at this one. See if you can identify what this one's going to be. We're still going to have the base of x, but what's my fraction going to be? It's not going to be 1 half. This is still x to the first power, so it will still be x to the 1 over 3 this time. This is a, a cube root, so the 3 is going to go on bottom. Here we have uh, a similar process. The 2 goes on top, 3 goes on bottom, so we're going to end up with x to the 2 thirds. This one's a little bit tricky, only because we have a larger number there, but it's the same process. 7 will go on top, 13 will go on bottom. This one will equal b to the 7 thirteenths. Okay, this concludes this video for today. Um, if you want to, you can go back in and watch it several times. These that we just did here, we're going to learn more about next time. I'm going to get some more practice on those. They're not necessarily difficult, just, just new. It's just a different way of writing these. But the other ones are just a matter of plugging it into your calculator correctly. You want to get some practice on those to make sure you're, you're good and proficient on those.